Good morning. Uh, this talk is uh, Faro. Is the idea is presenting Faro. That is a uh, is not a new language, but it still is a minimal, pure object oriented uh, reflective language. That is uh, quite a, a small in itself, but it's very powerful because on top of it we have created a lot of things. Uh, this talk was intended to be presented by Stefan Ducas, but I am not Stefan Ducas. Sorry. Uh, he, he has a, a problem with the arriving here with the, the trains uh, in France. We are in the middle of a big, really big strike that uh, is not a problem at all, but uh, sometimes makes the things a little more difficult. Well, uh, I am Paolo Tesone. I am one of the engineers working in the Faro Consortium. Basically, I am working also in the development of Faro with Steph, so uh, I want to present it. it I, I think it will not be the same, but I will do the best that I can. Well, Faro. What is Faro? Well, uh, Faro is a, a small talk inspir inspired language and environment, and it's uh, not new, but this question is always uh, we have it. Why to use Faro? Yes, Faro. Because for us, the most important thing, and the thing that we want to share with you, because uh, we see that you are uh, also a language enthusiast and you like a lot the simplicity and the elegancy of the language is that it's elegant and it's a really a small syntax. We can write the syntax in a, in a postcard and it has a simple but powerful object model. This is the whole syntax of Faro. Sorry if some of the details will not be able to be seen, but uh, this is it. This is the full syntax. We only have uh, this and with this we have a uh, a uh, pretty nice um, object model on top of it, basically a uh, dynamically type system where everything is an object, everything is an instance of uh, a class, and the class also uh, are objects. Also, we have our all methods are public. Uh, we don't have the idea of uh, private methods. They are virtual, so they are automatically uh, <coughs> executable from the subclasses, and we can have override without caring at all. All attributes are protected for us, and uh, we are using a single inheritance and with a small asterisk there that I will talk later. Uh, Faro is fully written in itself. In itself. All the, the code of Faro is bootstrapped from the sources. Even the, the virtual machine is uh, mostly written in a subset of, uh, of a small talk, a subset of Faro. And uh, we can modify everything in the, in the language uh, itself, in the uh, runtime, even during we are executing it, so it's so flexible to to change or, or improve it or even destroy it. Uh, Faro also is highly immersive. What we want to say with this that in uh, Faro nothing is a black box. You can check the code of all the methods, modify them, and uh, improve it or do it worse. But the important thing is that we can always learn from that and get new new ideas. It's fully inspectable. We can check all the objects in the in the image, all the objects objects in the memory, and we can change it them. And they have a lot of uh, reflective API to modify. It. Uh, also, you can as you can interact with all the objects and classes and methods are also objects. You can extra, uh, take a class and inspect it or modify it or send messages to uh, modify it in your in your program and doing uh, nice reflective things. As I told you before, we only have objects and messages. It's a real, pure, uh, object-oriented uh, world. And uh, everything that we have in the system are based in, in objects. And we use a lot the polymorphisms to, to implement the stuff. For example, if we want to implement not, uh, we have a false not. It should return true, and true not should return false. We let the receiver decide. We will use it doing a polymorphism. So, for example, when you when we, we will have three classes, one for the whole booleans with the common behavior, but one for false and one for true, because as a, every object, even true and false, are uh, instances of a class, the behavior of true and false and inter respective classes. And this is the implementation. And this is not just a theoretical thing. If you check the in the system, if you inspect the, the methods and check the source code of them and to modify, this is implementation. So with this, uh, not much much 
uh, concept. We have a very uh, powerful language and environment that basically it uh, does not have a lot of the things that we see in many object-oriented languages or mainstream object-oriented languages. Uh, because, for example, we don't need the idea of constructor because basically a constructor for us is sending a message to a well-known object, usually a class. Or, well, we need a no type declaration as is a dynamic type, dynamic, oh, sorry, dynamically type uh, language. We don't need uh, interfaces or type factories or, or different uh, solutions, well, because of the type uh, system we are using. Uh, the idea of having different visibilities for us is not important because basically we want to give the power to the developer and if the developer wants to send a message, uh, should be able at the end is the responsible or not for breaking or making the things uh, work. Also, a nice thing that we have in Faro is that as we have everything as an object, we have uh, the idea of customizing the representation of objects and have nice uh, inspectors on top of it. Basically, what we can do on many, <coughs> on all the objects is that we can execute code directly uh, interactively and with this uh, see the different results and for example, we can take and re-implement how the every object is visualized. And it's so easy of doing this that we can, for example, uh, integrate with uh, a powerful visualization framework that we have that is called ROSAL. And uh, we say, okay, for this object, we will represent it in this way, or we will have the, it, it represented as an array. At the end, the, the matrix Q is an array on a, of arrays. But we can implement it in, in more beautiful things. Or for example, uh, if we inspect a directory, uh, there is uh, an easy implemented way of presenting it as a, an explorer of this directory. And for example, for if you inspect one uh, file reference that is an image, it just shows the, the image in the, in the inspector. This also goes for all the objects that we have and uh, objects that are not usually accessible. For example, in this one we are implementing um, we are inspecting a method from a method dictionary in the class, one of the methods that we'll execute when we are uh, executing uh, or sending messages to instance of die hand dice handle, so they will have this implementation of plus. From the compile method we are inspecting, we have many views, but one is to see the, the um, AST node, and as this is an HT node, someone has took the time and say, okay, I will do an, an extension, but every time you are inspecting the IST node, I will provide a new view that just shows the source code of the method and highlights the, the node that you are selecting. This gives a lot of powerful to, uh, this is give a lot of power to open the system and create new, new visualization and new tools in an easy way. Because as we are, Developers, we, we think a lot about how to have faster development process. And one thing that I really love of Faro is that it's a live programming environment. You can basically uh, develop in the debugger. This is our base debugger where you can execute code and do debugger stuff, but also you can come here and modify this method. And once you modify the method, it will recompile the method and you can restart the execution from there. If you recompile the method, of course, it will restart from the beginning of the method. It will not do uh, the analysis to see the changes and restart in the middle, but it's powerful enough to do uh, a real nice TDD experience because you can really create the test and let all the other methods empty and you start debugging it until and you provide the, the smallest solution possible. A nice other thing that we have uh, is that this debugger is basically as uh, moldable as everything else in the system. So for example, uh, one of the users of Faro has implemented <coughs> uh, using the same debugger, a debugger that um, uh, this is a language called Vienna, if I don't remember, I remember well, and they have implemented an interpreter in Faro, but debugging that, uh, debugging the interpreter is, is boring and takes a lot of work, so they have created uh, a debugger on top of the debugger to de debug the, the language uh, of the interpreter. So this uh, ability to create new, new tools and to inspect objects, uh, we can do it not only for developing the Faro itself and tools for Faro, but also we do it or we try to sell to you and to everyone that live programming uh, can be something that we can do everywhere and we can do it in web apps, sockets, applica applications using sockets, uh, IoT applications, and anywhere. 
And basically, our goal as a, as a community is basically is generate uh, the tools or generate the, the small layers where uh, you can invent your own future or you can provide uh, new business ideas or new research ideas and produce innovation and produce new nice things of that. Basically, we are uh, aware that or we want you to, to make a successful life of programming in, in Faro and be also fun of it or both at the same time. And the idea is to pro provide a, a powerful language and environment where we can do innovative things. To that, one of the things that are more, uh, to me, is more uh, produced more proud is the community of Faro. We are a really nice community. Uh, Faro and all the, the tools are used by a lot of research groups all over the world. A lot of pl uh, different places from uh, Latin America, in the, uh, North America, in Africa, in Asia, a lot in, well, in Europe, but all over the world and it's very, very nice to see that. We have uh, uh, a lot of teachers uh, giving classes, uh, object-oriented introductory course, advanced reflective course, and uh, different, uh, usually object-oriented courses in Faro all over the world. Uh, so it's very nice. Uh, also, uh, these uh, pro different professors and all the community has produced a lot of op open source books that are available to, to anybody to download, to produce new content, to take it, destroy it, do whatever they want. Uh, also, we have a very nice tool that is an open MOOC. It's not only available for everyone, but also it's open source. You can access the videos, you can access the presentations, the material, whatever you want. You can change it, you can use it in your lessons or just for fun. Uh, one nice thing that we have and now is more active. Usually here used to be a, a slide talking about the, the mailing list, but now the mailing list is uh, is so far away because in the, the nice things happens in Discord. There is much more nicer con uh, communication where we interact uh, more din dynamically. And it's very, very nice. Uh, and it's a good place for beginners and also for experts and just to, to talk on, and sometimes only to, to hang out. Uh, also, we have a set of uh, <coughs> different uh, publications that we try to do uh, almost regularly, it's difficult because it takes time to do things nice, but we try to, to continue producing material all the time. Um, basically, we are not alone in the world. Uh, basically, this, all this is uh, part of a big community. We, are, uh, we have a lot of uh, companies and uh, universities and research institutes that they are using Faro, some to produce uh, pure research, some to produce applic uh, apl uh, applicated research, but also a lot of companies that they use it Faro because uh, it's good for their productivity. We have a lot of many success stories, but it will take a lot of time and from ap uh, commercial applications or to research applications, applications uh, for mob mobile, for applications on IoT or simple web or complex web applications as you want to see. Um, the most important thing for me is uh, that Faro, it's open, it's available, you can use it, you can hack it, you can break it, you, you uh, can do whatever you want. Basically, to me, it's very addictive, but maybe you like it or not. Uh, um, well, we, are, uh, we have all our source code in GitHub. We, you can check all the things that we have there. The, it's always bootstrapped from from the, the, the code, and we have a, an ICI process that is trying to build all the time uh, Faro from scratch and see when we, when we break it. So, well, this is all my, my presentation. I, I hope you, you like it, and, well, uh, I'm open to, to questions. And, and if not, you can pass through our stand in the K building, and we can talk longer, longer, and take coffees or beer.
if I have integers, then every integer is itself an object. And if I do addition, then I send a message to that object with the other object that you have with as a, the interface of the message. But at some point under the hood, you really do want to add those two numbers on your actual computer. Well, actually, uh, yes. Uh, the question was uh, how it, so it solved the problem, for example, when adding two different uh, integers, at the end someone has to, to do execute it in the, in the machine and produce the, the sum. Basically what we have is, uh, as many other um, languages using virtual machines, we have at the end a layer of uh, primitives. We try that this layer of primitives is as small as possible, but for example, adding two as uh, integers or adding two floats, we will require to have a, a primitive. The same when we want to send a message, for example. We try to reduce it, uh, and even in some of the cases, if you, when we have primitives, you can check the code and you see the fo fallback code. Because, for example, for uh, adding two integers, it can be done all in Faro. It's, com it's many orders of magnitude slow, slower than doing directly, but it can be done. So you can see in the in the primitive execute in primitive invocation the code uh, the small talk code that can be replaced in that. And the idea is that is also that uh, with the time I'm starting to see okay this primitive we want to show at least how it could be done in, in small talk or which is the equivalent of small talk code that should work. <laughs>